All right, what's up, guys? This is DDP back with another Mavericks post game show. Uh, some immediate news coming out of this game here before I get into all the details of it. It does not look good for the Dwight Powell injury situation. He went down on a non contact uh, injury. Looked to be in considerable pain, had to be helped off the floor. It was confirmed to be a an Achilles injury for his right Achilles. And they're going to schedule some tests in the morning, which will in all likelihood confirm that it is a torn ACL. And therefore, like J.J. Barea last year, he will be lost for the season. This is a, you know, Dwight Powell's a very de divisive figure in Mavericks Twitter especially, but Mavs land in general. But he has been a solid contributor. You can't ignore the plus-minus differential with him on the floor with Luka and KP and guys like that. So losing him will be very difficult for the Mavs to deal with. He goes down mid-first quarter, and the game kind of changed at that point. So even though the Clippers didn't have Paul George, the Mavericks lost a guy that has been very potent for them in the lineup this year and who has been playing rather well in recent you know, the last couple weeks at least for sure. So to talk about the game itself, uh, back and forth affair, Clippers end up pushing, taking control of the game about midway through the second quarter. They put together a 16 0 run that allows them to kind of take a stranglehold of about 10 points. And it kind of hovered around that mark for a while, right? Dallas could put some runs together. Luca was, very, very good tonight. 36 points, 10 rebounds, 9 assists. Uh, pretty much went tit for tat with Kawhi Leonard, 36, 11, and 2 for Kawhi, except you see Luka getting the teammates more involved. The only thing about uh, Luka's shot selection that was a little bothersome for me, I mean, he yes, he missed a big free throw late, and he missed a couple free throws early on in the game, so Dallas loses a game by three points, in which Luka, while he shot well at the free throw line, you know what, no, he shot 9 of 14 at the line. He missed five free throws. They lost by three. He's been in a funk. He was 9 of 12 at one point. You know, those two free throws at the end hurt him, and he missed a couple early on, so that's a clutch situation there. Um... I'll get to the end of the game in a moment because that's a big point of focus here for opportunities Dallas had. Uh, in this game, though, Luka, largely pretty good, did shoot 12 threes, 3 of 12 on threes, too many threes. Like, we keep talking about this, and a couple of them he was missing badly. I know Dallas as a team didn't shoot the three ball great here in this game, but that was a problem for me. He's 12 of 26 from the field overall. I, since I mentioned... Uh, Kawhi Leonard, you know, anyone who says, hey, 12 of 26 is less than 50%. Well, Kawhi was 12 of 29, although Kawhi took over at the end of the game to really put it away. But I digress. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., not a good night for him. He had a golden opportunity in the final moments of this game, about 11 seconds left. Got Dallas steals the inbound pass down three. Gets a wide open look for Tim Hardaway Jr., and you can just tell as soon as it leaves his hand, it's off. It's not straight line. You know, it's not a front iron, back iron situation. It's off left, and it has no chance of going in. That pretty much decided it there because DeLon Wright came in and immediately got them the steal they needed, set up the perfect scenario they needed to tie the game, and they just couldn't capitalize on it. Uh, in this game, you did have the return of Kristaps Porzingis. That was good because it sort of helped offset the loss of Dwight Powell nine minutes in. But in KP's return, he played 27 minutes. I think that was actually more than I anticipated, honestly. And yeah, his point, his his field goal shooting was terrible in this game. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Four of 17, including one of eight on three. That's not good. But I expected Russ, so I'm not, I'm not terribly upset by it because I anticipated it. You can't miss a couple weeks of action and then go against a good defensive team like the Clippers, and not have some kind of rust on that. I'm glad he still got uh, nine boards as well, and even blocked a shot, got a steal. We're going to need more from him, especially now with Dwight down. But at the very least, I appreciate what we did get out of him for his first game in, you know, 10 games, probably two weeks uh, or more out. So that was good. 
Uh, elsewhere, you had Maxi, pretty decent game off the bench. Obviously, he had to play 32 minutes because of the Powell injury. Eight points, five boards on four seven shooting. He also had a great look late in the game for a big three Dallas needed, but missed. Uh, he did get two blocks, so that's nice. In this game, I think it, a lot of it boiled down to the Mavericks didn't get enough out of their bench that they needed because, yeah, they're looking at like 20 points here off of that. And I know the Clippers, because of Lou Williams, have the best uh, scoring bench in the league. That's been, a you know, obviously with Williams there, that's been a trend for them in recent years. But Dallas is better than their bench show tonight. And I know part of that equation got messed up, obviously, with the injury, but they got outperformed, and that was a big factor in this game, I feel. Now, when Dallas, towards the end of the third quarter, actually got themselves back into the game, it was because they orchestrated an 8-0 run that allowed them to take a double-digit deficit and cut it down into single digits and really put themselves in very good a very good situation entering the fourth quarter. And they even held on to that until Luka was ready to come back in the game. Uh, in the final you know six and a half minutes as is typical for Luca so they put themselves in this situation they managed to grab the lead three or four different times it went incredibly back and forth in the closing minutes of this game where Dallas ties it Dallas takes the lead Clippers tie it Dallas misses but Clippers miss Maverick score then you get a three from the Clippers with Shamit uh Shamit I think it was how follow was saying it um Shamit hit a couple of ballsy-ass threes in this game, where even once Kawhi wasn't taking over, and Kawhi took over for like four or five baskets in quick succession, working that mid-range game, getting down uh, getting down into the middle of the paint and fading a little bit. Very, very reminiscent of the Raptors Finals series last year uh, from Kawhi Leonard in terms of that performance. And then, yeah, Shamit steps up. 18 points for him off. Uh, not I almost said off the bench. That wouldn't be correct at all. Uh, but 18 points for him and a couple of ballsy-ass three-pointers. The Clippers actually extended to a seven-point lead with like a minute eight left. And you're like, oh, well, this is pretty much done. But Luka comes back with a quick three. And they just kept answering. Dallas kept answering. And then, as I mentioned earlier, you get the quick turnover on the inbound pass that sets up the opportunity for Tim Hardaway Jr. from the elbow extended to knock down a three and tie it all up at um, 108, 108, and it just doesn't go. And then uh, Dallas then fouls, uh, I think it was Jermichael Green. He goes to the line, and he misses both free throws. Dallas gets the board. Dallas comes back the other way, and they just they can't, uh, they can't square it away. Got some good looks. And could not close the door. Kawhi Leonard. Really, what ends up happening in this case here is Luca's fouled. I, I should recontextualize what I was just saying. Luca's fouled doesn't even get the opportunity uh, to do anything. And then at the line, misses the first, has to miss the second. Misses the second. Kawhi gets the board. Free throws the other way. Luca gets a floater at the end with 0.6 seconds left. To get us to the final score, 110-107. Um, this is a game Dallas had a real chance to win. It's a game that they were so improbably even in. Between stealing the inbounds pass and going the other way and getting a wide open look, that was pandemonium, and that was where they needed to capitalize. Then they put Jermichael Green on the line, and he misses two big free throws. The Clippers are a very good free throw shooting team. I think towards the top of the league. I know Montrez Harrell's not great, but they put a good free throw shooting team at the line, and they missed both when Dallas desperately needed them to miss both. Opportunity going back the other way for a chance again, a mulligan, and it does not work because they don't get the shot up. Luka tries. He tries to get the shot up, so he's shooting three free throws at least, but instead has to go to the line and then misses a big free throw in the clutch. Okay, strategy changes. This is an intentional miss now. And so, yeah, 9 to 14 at the free throw line for Luka. I, I don't want to harp on it too much. I know I, I talked about his three point shooting was not good in this game. Um, and he, he missed a couple of them bad in, the, in that fourth quarter push. Uh, a couple air balls, in fact. 
Uh, and then the free throw shooting 9 of 14, that is continuing to be a problem for him. And it hurt in this situation because they desperately, desperately needed to hang in this game. And even though it was still going to be an uphill battle, it's just a momentum swing because you pretty much got an opportunity for a mulligan when Tim Hardo- after Tim Hardaway Jr. missed that crucial three-point attempt. And it was like, okay, we have a chance to make up for it here. And crap, now we've missed a free throw. And now it's not going to matter. Tim Hardaway Jr., 4 of 12 from the field, 3 of 7 from 3. It's just not a night where the three ball was falling for the Mavericks. They do outshoot the Clippers 43% to 37%. The three ball, though, 28% for Dallas compared to 32% for the Clippers. Clippers are 12 of 38, Dallas 12 of 43. So both teams miserable at the uh, beyond the arc there. But a big difference here to me is... I mean, I just said at the free throws, the Clippers 26 of 33 at the line. It's 79%. Dallas, meanwhile, 17 of 24 for 71%. Again, I've said this before. The Clippers made more free throws than we attempted. That will play a big factor in close games like this. So for Dallas to also have the lower percentage, not good in this scenario. Clippers held onto the ball well. Dallas 12 turnovers. They commit. Uh, Dallas did out assist the Clippers 23 to 19. The Clippers though out rebound Dallas by eight, including eight offensive rebounds more. 20 offensive rebounds for the Clippers compared to just 12 for the Mavericks. And 12 is not a small number, but it feels like just 12 when you just said 20 and you said that you got out rebounded by eight. That was huge as well in this game. Now Dallas. Serious rim protection. Eight block shots. Luka had a couple. Maxi had a couple. KP had one. Uh, so that's the five. I, I guess I can look back through the stat sheet to see who else got the rest. Uh, Clippers, nine turn, or excuse me, nine steals compared to seven for Dallas. And Dallas commits seven more uh, fouls in the game here. So who else had these blocks? Maxi, Boban. Boban gave you two as well. Maxi, Boban. And uh, Luca all gave you two, and then you got one out of KP and one out of Dorian Finney-Smith. So there you go. Bobin, for his credit, 12 points, 7 boards in 12 minutes, and they were playing him deep into the clutch time there. Didn't bring KP back until the final couple minutes. Uh, I think that was more maybe Bobin just a little bit gassed. Obviously, his size, you need better speed out there if you can. Uh, and KP... He's still a good rebounder and a shot uh, shot blocker, so I think they were just trying to lean on that as much as they could. And unfortunately, it ended up not mattering because Dallas had its opportunities but couldn't close the door in the final minutes. This is a young team. It's still a young team. It's led by a 20-year-old superstar. He's going to be an all-star this year. Uh, an argument could be made that he should have been one last year, but all the same, this is a young team and they're going to have to go through these growing pains. The lessons they're learning now, by season's end, they shouldn't be they shouldn't be making as many of them. I know they said earlier when Dallas, they said in the broadcast, when Dallas has trailed in a game by 10 points or more this year, they are 10 and 12. Well, now they're 10 and 13. So, yeah, there, there's something to be said about that where they're playing just under 500 ball. But that's, again, you're putting yourself in the hole in the first place, falling behind by 10-plus points in these situations. So uh, a team, as you get more experienced, and it's not just about, hey, finding a piece. It's about just growing as a team, and that's the continuity that they've built with so many guys on multi-year deals now, deals of at least three years a pop. Uh, And so with that continuity, with that experience, you can make fewer of these mistakes and then really come next year and the year after that, that's where you should see a leap than where these are the rarity and not the they're they're too commonplace right now and it kind of reminds me not to the same extent because Dallas while Luca and KP are very young its roster overall is not the same as this but it kind of reminds me of the Thunder their first year in Oklahoma City where I think that was 2008 where they were a terrible team like 23 wins 23 and 59 and you saw a lot of those mistakes. They could hang tight in these games, but they always faded or made the crucial turnovers or didn't box out or just couldn't couldn't finish, couldn't knock down shots in the final moments. And then in their case, they jumped to 50 wins the next year 
But really, it was just a matter of, I think it was 50 wins the next year. But regardless, it was just a matter of they learned a lot from that experience. And then when you saw them a year, certainly beyond that, suddenly they were one of the better teams in the league in those situations. So again, Russell Westbrook, Harden, and KD for that particular iteration of the Thunder I'm talking about compared to... And Serge Ibaka, by the way, as we talk about potential trade targets now, especially now with uh, Dwight Powell out. I just don't see Ibaka being plausible with the Raptors still being really good. But uh, now we talk about Dallas, in this case, Luka and KP. And Tim Hardaway Jr., who's been very good for us in the starting lineup this year. I still think he's a little too inconsistent. But maybe they can find something to kind of take a similar step forward in that regard. But... That's going to do it for my time on this, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, check out the shirts on represent.com, and remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace.